And those onomat historically looking at processes of education have held that there are two kinds of knowledge. There are many ways of dividing the knowledges in Islam, but perhaps the most fundamental and the only one which I have time to speak of now is the distinction between the knowledge that serves the soul and the knowledge that serves the body. These are two interactive entities, as we've already seen. <coughs> now, the knowledge that sustains the soul has only one source, which is revelation. Because the soul, or the spirit, if you like, is not of this world. Because it's immortal, it partakes of infinity. <coughs> Nothing in the material world partakes in infinity. So we can say that that spark which is at the center of the human creature is not of this world. The Quran says they ask you about the ruh. Say the ruh, the spirit is of the command of my Lord or the affair of my Lord. And of knowledge you have been given but little. So it's of the affair or the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that which sustains it in this world cannot be a logic which is derived from the logic of the world. That's why we need revelation, basically. Other aspects of human ma'ash, human welfare, can be worked out from the data of the senses and uh, inference from the phenomena of the natural world. But to do, when we talk about the sciences of the soul, we are talking about sciences that must have a celestial divine origin. Of course, the revelation in our case is the Qur'an, uh, the Sunnah being, in the sense, its interpretation, modelled by the one who was himself the most perfect example of human education, the one educated by his Lord, the educator, in the name of his Lord, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I think at this point, because there is more that I, I want to say, and as I understand it, it's time for the Adhan of, of Maghrib, I will break off. I don't think I need to apologize for dealing with this subject in some detail, because I think if we understand it properly, we can strengthen our niya. And the niya, when we acquire the Islamic knowledge, should be a very clear niya, not just sincere, but also articulate. We need to know exactly what knowledge is, what it's for, where it can take us, and what is the distinction between useful knowledge and useless knowledge, and what is the distinction between true knowledge and bogus knowledge. So I hope that what I've said have, has been at least to move in that direction. And inshallah, after the prayer, we'll have an opportunity to look into the way in which Islamic civilization, the consensus of the ulama, has traditionally carried out the division of the sciences in a little bit more detail. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi ta'ala rabbil alameen.